All right, in our last video, we talked about the central limit theorem and how it explains that the mean of a sample taken from a population is going to have a probability distribution that is normal centered around the population mean. It's also worth noting, and actually let me bring up a distribution here and just notate this a little bit. This is the population mean down here. This is going to be the probability distribution of the mean of a sample taken from that population. And it's also worth noting that the expected value of that sample mean is actually our population mean. It doesn't actually mean that we expect to get the exact population mean in our sample as, a, as a, the average of our sample. It just means that's the average value we can expect to get from that sample mean. And that makes sense based on a normal probability distribution centered around the population mean. Um, basically, it's saying being somewhere in here, that, that sort of meat of the curve, it's more likely. And being out here, less likely. And again, we're talking about the mean of the sample. And, um, you know, there's an even chance of getting a mean of the sample that's below the population mean or above the population mean. Another thing that we talked about was that larger samples tend to give more accurate predictions of the population mean. So let's use an example to illustrate that. We'll go ahead and look at, we've done this example before. Let's talk about the, uh, the height of men in the US. I think we said the average was 70 inches and the standard deviation is three inches. So that's that's for the population of adult males in the United States. So there's an average height of, of 70 inches, standard deviation of three inches. So if we took one man from the entire US population and, and measured his height, we would expect to get a distribution that looks something like this. You know, we're gonna have uh, it's, it's going to be centered around the expected value is still 70 inches, but uh, you know the, we did, we'd have probably a 95% chance. In fact, we would have a 95% chance of being within two standard deviations of the mean. So uh, you know, 95% chance that we'd be within 64 inches and 76 inches. And uh, you know, but there's a halfway decent chance we'd be somewhere out there, like at, at 74, uh, 64 or 76. Um, you know, okay, it would be a two and a half percent chance in either direction. But hey, that's a chance. If we took a sample, what would a, what would the dis sampling distribution of uh, if we took a sample of 10 men? What would the, be the average value of of sampling from 10 men? Well. The, the chance of us getting out there at, at, at these far numbers like 76, let's say, I mean, 76 is, means six foot four. If you take 10 men from the US population, what's the chance their average height is gonna be six foot four? Uh, pretty low, unless you know, you're taking a sample of like college basketball players or something like that. So uh, you know, we're much, much less likely to get an average I mean, even two and a half percent would be way outside the bounds. No way we're anything we're anywhere approaching two and a half percent likely to get an average of six foot four. Um, so, our average for a sample size of ten, we're going to use red for our sample size of ten. The, dist the probability distribution for that average is going to look something like this. And I can see we really need to extend this line here. What if we took a sample size, I realize I didn't actually write in our sample size of 10, what if we took a sample size of 100? What is the probability distribution going to look like for our, the mean of our sample then? Well, it's going to be something like this. That went off screen, I did that on purpose. You know, we're gonna be really, really likely to be very close to 70 inches as the average for that sample size of 100. There is essentially no chance at all 
that we're going to end up with something like, I mean, there's no chance at all we're going to end up at a 74-inch average. No, no chance at all that we're going to be, end up at a 73-inch average. It, it, it's vanishingly small, is a term that researchers often use. So um, this is just to illustrate how larger sample sizes tend to uh, have much, be much more accurate predictors of the population mean. So this sample of 100 is going to be a lot closer, going to give an average that's probably going to be a whole lot closer to the population average of 70 than just a sample size of 1. So what does this translate to mathematically? Well, let's put a little, I'm going to make a sort of a mini table here to illustrate. We're talking about two things here, right? We're talking about taking an observation x, and that's just you know one observation from the population, or we're talking about a sample and the average that we get from the sample. So this is individual. It's an individual observation, or we have a sample mean. All right, the expected value of an individual observation is going to be the average of the population. The expected value of a sample mean is also going to be the average of the population. But here's where things get different. The standard deviation for x is going to be equal to the standard deviation of the population. It's the same thing. You know, it's, it's the standard deviation of the population. But for a sample, the standard deviation of the average of the sample is going to be the standard deviation of the population, of individuals in the population, divided by the square root of n, where n is the sample size. In other words, as n goes up, the standard deviation of the mean of the sample is going to go down. And likewise, as, as if, if n is smaller, there would, have a, there would be less of a change to the standard deviation for the mean of the sample. But in any case, as long as your n is larger than 1, as long as you're taking a sample of more than one individual, you're going to get, have less of a standard deviation than you would get from just taking one observation from the population. And this becomes very powerful. As you take a really large sample, the standard deviation on the mean of that, popul the, of the mean of that sample is not going to vary a whole lot from the population mean. And that's a really key point here. Let's take a look at another example. So really, really key equation right here. Right there. Copy that down. The standard deviation of the mean of a sample is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Let's look at another example to illustrate. In the last video, we talked about measuring Americans' internet usage. And we said five years ago, we measured, so this is, uh, let's say, five years ago, we had an average of three hours per week and a standard deviation of one hour. That's hardly a D. It looks more like an O, but you know, you just have to bear with me. All right, so that's what we measured five years ago, and we want to update and see if there's been a change. You know, we don't know. Maybe there's less internet usage. Uh, what did I say? Three hours per week? This should be three hours per day. It's crazy. I mean, that's just really unbelievable. Are we living in the Stone Age? Um, we, want, we don't know whether it's gone up, gone down, whatever, but we want to measure and we want to update our um, what we know about Americans' internet usage. So if we went out and just found one random person and asked them how much time they spend on the internet per day. And they said, eh, three and a half hours. Does that tell us enough to make an assumption about whether in Americans' internet usage has changed? Now, you might just be saying right off the bat, a sample size of one is terrible. You can never really tell anything from a sample size of one. And you'd basically be right. But let's just, let's just game this thing out and, and just to satisfy our curiosity. All right, so in our sample size of one, 
our average, if, if, if we're assuming an average, our, our, our hypothesis here, our, our basic hypothesis, our null hypothesis, is that the average is three hours per day. What would be the chance, if that is true, that we'd see, an we'd see a single observation that would be at 3.5 hours per day? So here we have x equals 3.5, mu equals 3, and standard deviation equals 1. What's the chance that we end up at here, right? Well, it's pretty, you know, we can just plug this into our handy equation for normal distribution and say 3.5 minus 3 divided by 1, z equals 0.5. We can go ahead and look that up in our z table. Let's do that now. Looking up 0 0.5. So 0 0.5, 0. And we get 69.15 as our cumulative distribution, right? So I really didn't leave myself enough much room here, but whatever. All that is 69.15%. What does that tell us? Does it tell us much? Uh, OK, let's, let's keep thinking about this. Now, we wanted to know what, what were the chances that we had changed from an average of three hours, right? So. Really, what we want to know is what are the chances we would have gotten that far away from the mean, if this is in fact true. If, if in fact, three hours is the average, what are the chances we'd be 0.5 standard deviations in either direction or more? 0.5 standard deviations or more away from the mean. OK, well, we, we can figure that out. Actually, the, the thing to do here is to say, well, OK, if everything less than half a standard deviation away. Sorry, I think I said 3.5 standard deviations away. I, what I meant was 3.5 hours. Um, in other words, one half of a standard deviation from the mean, since our standard deviation was one. Um, what does all this represent? Well, this represents you know, 30.85%. It's just too sloppy. I got to fix this. Sorry. 30.85%. So there's, there'd be a 30.85% chance we'd be that high, that far above the mean or higher. But we're really interested in knowing just what are the chances we'd be this far away from the mean in general. Because we don't know. It could, we, you know, internet usage could be higher or lower. So I'm going to draw over. We really need to know what's the chance that we were 0.5 above or 0.5 below in terms of standard deviations or our z-score, same thing. And so this is also going to be equal. This is also going to be equal to 30.85. So and it's the same thing. Multiply by two, we get something like you know approximately 62%. And that tells us, okay, what does that 62% represent? It represents the chance that we would be this far away from the mean or higher based on a single observation, right? We went out there, we asked somebody on the street, we said, it, you know, we wanted to know, do the internet habits from five years ago still hold? Is the average still three, and a, three hours per day? We went out and asked one person, and they said, I spent about three and a half hours on the internet per day. What are the chances we'd be so far away from the mean that we'd be a half standard deviation from the mean based on one ask? Well, it would be like 62%. Which is not, what does that tell us? It tells us nothing. 62%, I mean, that's likely, basically. It says, oh yeah, that's kind of what we expected. Something around there, you know? Now, if they had said, I spent 20 hours a day on the internet, well, that would be cause for rethinking things. We're like, maybe this guy is crazy. Or maybe it means that attitudes have changed a lot because he's like uh, 17 standard deviations above the mean. Granted, one. One person is, is hard to measure by, but it, it would be sort of telling. But let's actually switch this up a bit. Let's 
I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this, give myself some more real estate. Let's say instead of asking one person, you asked 100 people. And you still got an average of three and a half. Would that tell you something about your assumptions? Let's take a look at this. So we're still testing the assumption that, that average internet usage is three hours per day. Standard deviation is still one hour. But now we got, we have an X bar. That's just going to have to do. Uh, we have an X bar of 3.5, meaning you know our, the average of our sample is 3.5. We have an N of 100, which means that the sample standard deviation, sorry, the, uh, the standard deviation of the mean of our sample is going to be standard deviation divided by the square root of N. And therefore, since our standard deviation was 1, and the square root of n, in this case 100, square root of 100 is 10, we're using a standard deviation for the mean of our sample of 0.1. So what does that look like? If the mean of the population is still 3, and in a sample of 100, the standard deviation is going to be 0.1. 3.5 is way the heck out here. This is a z-score of 5. Five sample standard deviations away from the mean. Right? And let's just do, this, the, let's just do the math out. It is 3.5 minus 3 divided by 0 0.1 equals 5. What's a standard deviation of 5 in our table? Good Lord, we don't even have it. It's so tiny, or so large, you could say, that we, it, 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 we didn't even make it onto our table. Once you get up past 3, basically, you're talking about there's basically nothing bigger. Uh, you know, there's, okay, so we get up to 99.81%. I, I don't know exactly what five standard deviations is, but it's going to be like 99999. Nine, nine. I'm just making this up, but it's, it's, it's really, really, really close to one as a cumulative probability. In other words, I didn't even, this is sort of accurate, I didn't even really leave myself. This out here, I wanted a new color. This little bit out here is going to be like 0. 0.00001. It's going to be basically next to nothing. So, what are the chances that the old, that the, the old um, average for internet usage per day still holds? Once we did a, a, a sample of 100 people and got an average of three and a half, it's really, really, really little. I mean, yes, you have to. You have to. We're actually. You have to combine these two values. It's really 0.001 times 2. But that's the chance that, that this could actually, we would actually have observed a value of 3, and a, an average value of 3.5 on a sample of 100 if we still have a population average of 3. The chances that we would observe 3.5 as an average of our sample of 100 is 0.001 times 2. Again, I sort of made that number up, but it's tiny small. And so this is the power of sampling. It makes things so much more clear. It tells us so much more about the population. Even with a sample of 100, much more telling than just a sample of 1, for instance.